Hello and welcome back to the Jazz Ranch. Now the, the weather's better. A lot of the cowhands are out this evening sitting around the campfire singing bebop tunes to each other. So uh, we're really enjoying ourselves and I have a special lesson for you this evening and I have a little couple of anecdotes. My, my uncle had sort of a musical talent and when he was a young kid he started to learn the guitar and he got really interested in music and his father asked him one day hey son what do you want to do when you grow up and uh, he said dad when I grow up I want to be a musician and his father said to him son you can't do both <laughs> so that was kind of a put down but anyway you wouldn't believe some of the things that people say to you on breaks like I was playing with a band one time and we took a break and an old fellow came up to us and was giving us some compliments and then he finally said to us, uh, hey fellows, what do you do in real life? And one of the witty guys in the band said, well, we rob banks. We just play music for fun. <laughs> so now anyway, uh, since I made a lot of money robbing banks, now I can afford to give you these lessons for free, particularly for those folks that can't afford to pay for lessons. I'm happy to do it. So. This evening I have a special lesson which was a request by one of my subscribers to play Take the A Train and to include a solo that's written out. So this solo will be written out for you and it comes from my book so you might want to check out my book but I have a lot of songs in there and solos that you can learn to play. So here we go now with Duke Ellington's Take the A Train. <clears throat> Next, I want to repeat the solo, the written solo, and then I want to move it into an improvised solo so you can compare the difference between a written one and an improvised. In other words, there's a certain element of spontaneity when you get good at this in which the actual improvised solo is going to sound better than anything that you can play that's written out. Um, it's full of more surprises and more, maybe more risks, more chances, and more interesting things can happen. So, like, uh, we'll listen to that now. <laughs>
we're going to talk a little about the central ideas in this solo on Take the A Train. Uh, you know, I have numerous videos out on improvisation, so I just don't want to repeat myself with a lot of things you've already heard. But let's just look at some of the lines in this. Now, the first line is... So what I do is I try to play phrases. So to me, this is a phrase that has an ascending line and then a descending line in steps. So it ascends in arpeggios or skips and then descends in stepwise or actually chromatic movements. So I like that idea of the wave-like idea of ascending and then descending and steps and skips. That's one of the central things I talk about. Then some space and then a figure that sort of answers that first phrase. I did this. So that there's a turn into a target tone. See, so the first phrase based on a C major 9 is then so that targets in chromatically to a nice target tone, then up, skips up, and then answering that with this phrase. So that kind of answers the second phrase. That answers it. Now a new phrase. Now there, that same idea, it skips down, descending, and then up the scale, and then a target tone on a non-chord tone or the flat nine. So you want to be sure that you're supporting the voicing in the left hand with these notes. Now this is a flat nine to a sharp nine, and that, that particular type of device of the flat nine and sharp nine is used a lot on dominant seventh chords. And then resolving it to the five, to that, and then it's another phrase. Now, the next part, I restate that first idea, that first phrase. This time, instead of going up, instead of going, I go down. So I'm not just, I'm making it a little bit different, and then... The other thing is that you want to do is you want to have a, a variety of phrases that use a lot of different time values. In other words, you want eighth notes, you want triplets, you want quarter notes, you want pauses, points of rest, and so on and so on. So you want a variety of different note values. I want to touch on some more important points, that of making a lot of rhythmic variety to the solo, not just melodic, but rhythmic. In other words, using eighth notes, eighth note triplets, quarter notes, quarter note triplets, half notes, whole notes, having space, and having distinct phrases which have beginning and endings. Like, here's a, here's a phrase, and then it's followed by this. So it complements it. That da-da, then and then the next phrase is, begins with that figure. Now there, on a G7 augment, and I'm using a flat 9 and a sharp 9. So I'm not just playing the chord tones, but I'm also playing on some of the color tones, or the upper extensions of the chord. And then ending the phrase like that. So the phrase goes, let me get that. Like that. And then... Moving into the bridge. Now, same here. I use a tritone substitute and get that tone in there. The five going to the 13, resolving to the five of the one chord, the F major chord on, on the first beat of the bridge. Then I have a little quote from Mersey Dotes, a little song there. A little melodic phrase, and then of these offbeats. Then I end up on that chord. Let's get that right now. To there to the flat five. So those offbeats and then ending up on a flat five. Then I have this, that same kind of phrase is continued. There it is again, repeated. Now that chord 
is emphasizing the six and the sharp 11 and the nine and the sharp 11. So it's like a playing off of the E chord with a D7 chord here and then an E chord on top. Off beats again into that flat nine there at the end, flat nine, and then resolving it there. So wrapping up, I just want to say if learning a written out solo is helpful to you to learn how to improvise, in other words, get ideas about it, more or less study it intellectually, and so on, then this is for you. So let me know what you think, and now we'll conclude. So I'm just giving you a shot here of the song as it looks written out in my book. And I have numerous solos like this written out in my book and tunes for you to learn. So please go to my website and check out my book, the table of context and the uh, contents and also the endorsements. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch. The campfires are dying down. We put the horses to bed. And I want to leave you with an inspiring quote from the famous French author, Victor Hugo, who wrote Les Miserables, he said this, Music expresses that which cannot be said and which cannot be silent. So until next time, I'll say in the words of my friend Hermie Dressel, God rest his merry soul, swing loose, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.